I'm thrilled to have Margaret Mutchlet, Project Director for Africa at CWP Global. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for being here. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much for having me. Um, could you just talk us through the 40 billion Amman project in Mauritania? And what role does it play in advancing the country's journey to net zero in 20, by 2050? I would love to talk about this. So we're currently getting ready for feed um, in the, on the Amman project. We have managed to prove the resource, fantastic wind and solar resource. It's a hybrid project. We have confirmed with, through land studies, bathymetry and geotechnical studies, mm -hmm. um, the um, project definition. Um, we've conducted concept select um, studies on free offtake vectors. The Amman project is 30,000 megawatt of renewable energy. So mm -hmm. it, it really allows a multitude of offtake vectors, um, converting green hydrogen in either green ammonia, liquefied hydrogen or green steel. So we're currently studying the feasibility and the market of all of these three projects. Mm. The Mauritanian government was one of the first governments that, that enacted an enabling and bespoke legislation for the green hydrogen industry called the Green Hydrogen Code. And that was enacted on 9 of October this year, 2024. So we're in the process of doing final long-term negotiations with the government for the long-term concession agreement. Yeah. Um, and we have a local team and a local presence there which really help us to put the project together um, in a very substantial way. So just a little bit of a background on the Amman project. Now coming to the question of net zero, um, you need to realize that Mauritania and like most of the African projects have a very, all countries have a very small carbon footprint. Um, the carbon footprint the existing carbon footprint is a component in electricity where they have a combination of HFO, um, fired power stations, solar and wind, but a big component of solar and wind. And then in the mining industry, which are far located from the grid, where they're still relying on, um, on HFO or fossil fuels. Now, bringing green hydrogen and electric, rural electrification projects at scale to Mauritania mm -hmm. obviously support not only the industry, but also bring the technology to the country. Um, and we have discussions with the government as well as the mines um, to look at ways how to decarbonize the electricity consumption that they have. So that's the first. The second component is the decarbonization of value addition um, of iron ore. Currently, Mauritania has a high quality iron ore, one of the best in the world. But that iron ore is basically mined, crushed and exported to countries like China, where it is then where the value addition takes place. With the introduction of green hydrogen, that process can move, the value addition process can move to Mauritania and you can actually produce green steel by utilizing hydrogen for the direct iron reduction process and export um, H, what we call hot briquetted iron or value addition. So not only do we look at decarbonizing the existing facilities, but also to bringing value addition by, by utilizing green energy, not only the energy, but also the chemical process um, to the country. And how does your project in Djibouti uh, fit into the company's broader strategy for green hydrogen initiatives? So all our projects in, in, in the continents have different potential, different offtake vectors and are strategically, strategically located to serve into the future market um, of decarbonization. The project in Djibouti specifically is very strategically located to, to become a green ship fuel hub. hub. Um, in in um, in the area where Djibouti is located, as well as green fertilizer. So currently, there's a vast number of fertilizers imported through the um, Djibouti harbor um, towards Ethiopia and some of the landlocked countries. Um, so green ammonia can be utilized as a green shipping fuel as well as a green fertilizer. And what impact is expected on the local economy and job creation in African countries where you operate concerning, you know, again, the green hydrogen project? Um, I'm so glad you asked this because if we, if we really look at the green hydrogen and renewable projects, the big advantage that it has, it has a local, a, a very big onshore or on land footprint. And in that requires huge number of labor force um, and, and a very diverse labor force, not only your PhD graduates, but also from middle skill, uh, you know, semi-skilled to middle skilled uh, labor force. So obviously the first is job creation 
and, and, and specifically job creation for currently our youth. Um, in Africa, I'm coming from Namibia, we have the same challenge there. In Africa, we sit with a fantastic, youthful, uh, energetic, innovative and informed youth, mm. but not gainfully employed. Um, and projects like this obviously create an excellent opportunity not to, to enter into, into a level mm. and then grow with these projects. These yeah. projects time frame because they're renewable energy have long time frame so you really can grow with these projects. It, it offers a fantastic pipeline where you can enter in a low level and have a career path ahead of you. That's one. The, the other component is by bringing these projects to Africa, we bring the technology to Africa. Mm -hmm. Africa becomes the sandbox for new development and new technology. Our relationship with original equipment manufacturers are of such a way that we look at what is the opportunity for local content, local assembly, and even potential local manufacturing, building on existing strengths, mm -hmm. but also exploring new, new versions. The access to affordable green energy we have discussed, um, a value addition we have to talked about, you know, adding adding value in Africa and not just exporting raw material. And for me, very close to me is is the extreme good impact that it could have in a small medium enterprise, yeah. the ecosystem that need to support these projects. Yeah. We really are seeing. Currently, already while the projects are on development, unique spheres of ecosystem in the small and medium enterprise developing Africa business developing supporting these projects whether it's from certification auditing right down to the hardcore um, investment in the project um, all of this is 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 possible so the green hydrogen projects really offer a very range holistic comprehensive and fantastic mix um, for for the countries Lastly, diversification of export baskets. Um, we have a lot of countries that, because of climate change, are moving and, and the industry and the eco economic um, complexity is moving away from uh, certain aspects of the industry. Mm -hmm. um, you know, agriculture with climate change gets, gets difficult. Um, it, it has challenges. And the diversification of the export basket obviously helps the complexity of the export. Mm -hmm. And what makes Africa a unique space for renewable energy? And could you provide an overview of some upcoming projects, you know, that you've planned for the continent? Yeah. Um, when, when, we, when you take the map of Africa, you cannot help but notice the extreme superior wind resource overlaid by the solar resource, and in some countries, hydro resources mm -hmm. or biomass resources. So when we really go through the list of potential in a geothermal, potential renewable energies, you find most of the countries have one or two and some of even three. So that hybrid of renewable resources allow you to, to build projects that has a capacity factor that's more than, for instance, that the sun is shining or the wind is blowing. It really stretched that, that energy availability and energy security for these projects, which is critical yeah. with its long value chain and its in capital intensive um, development. Um, the other component is Africa has areas of land which sometimes due to climate change, mm -hmm. it's underutilized, mm -hmm. not fully utilized, is becoming really desert. We're talking about desertification. And it's a coincidence, and I don't necessarily think a coincidence, that the best resources overlay with this land availability. And yes, we need to be sensitive. Obviously, where there's land availability and where there's desertification, there is biodiversity sensitivity. Mm -hmm. But being a sensible developer, Land availability is, is the third component. Access to a coastal line, and, and most of the countries are dry. Um, water is not plenty, so you go to, towards desalination and you have a fantastic coastal line in Africa. And then the best component is the labor force. Access to a diverse, eager, and youthful labor force. For In a nutshell, this is what, what makes it <laughs> very good to develop projects in Africa. Our projects in Africa stems right across the, the globe at this stage or, or across the continent. We have obviously the Amman project that is in, in, in Mauritania, mm. 30,000 megawatt. We're looking at the other side of Africa, the Djibouti project, um, which is around 5,000 megawatt. Could be a phase two in there. 
We also have a project very close to us, it's in Angola, uh, which we are currently entering into. Smaller projects, 600 megawatt, based on hydropower. And then we have a presence in, in Morocco as well. So at this stage, this is in Africa, um, the project we're looking at. We're also considering projects in Argentina and Australia, naturally. And how can foreign investment transform African communities, specifically within, in the, within the renewable energy space? Okay. So I would like to highlight three areas there. The, the one, the obvious is the investment in the projects. Mm. But it's not just investment in, in the projects. Because of the long value chains and the capital intensiveness, it's the cost of capital, bringing down the cost of capital of these projects to be competitive mm. in the market is very critical. We're talking about the gap between willingness to pay and what it actually will cost in the initial years to produce green green hydrogen, green ammonia, or whatever green derivative there is from hydrogen. And the, one of the ways how we can narrow down that gap and bring forward the commercial viability of these projects is lowering cost of capital. For yeah. every 1% that we lower the cost of capital, we have a saving roughly about 100 US dollar per ton of product produced. So it's, it's substantial. Yeah. So lower the cost of capital, underwriting, risk underwriting, and lower the cost of capital. The second component is financing into the infrastructure that's required, the enabling infrastructure, whether it is private operator financing, public-private partnership financing, or financing into the government's through development agencies. But all of these projects require an expansion of harbour facilities, some road facilities, some of them grid facilities, again, to the benefit of the country, to the benefit of these projects. So investing in enabling infrastructure um, as an early investment. And something that's very close to my heart is investing into that ecosystem in country, those that local content in country. So investing into businesses, finding smart partnerships with local businesses, mm -hmm. grow and find those partnerships which will support this projects and these projects, not just directly, but also induced and indirectly mm -hmm. to create that enabling infrastructure and enabling ecosystem and enabling business world for these projects to flourish and function, making sure that when we have these projects, when we go into construction, the Africans are ready to be employed and ready to be contracted. And just one more question. Um, what is the value of African Energy Week? What are you looking to achieve at this year's event? Okay. So for us, it is about networking. It is, it is an opportunity to meet um, um, known colleagues, um, meet known people that you already have, have networks for, but also meeting foreign people, people that have, you have not met, explore other opportunities, being coming aware of other opportunities. And I must tell you, one of the things that it do to me personally is the energizing. You know, you, I get to these conferences, the, and, and Africa Energy Week is one of them. Mm -hmm. You get to this and you listen to the, to the presenters, you look at the people around you, and you can't help by being absolutely energized. And it yeah. sort of carry you forward yeah. through the challenges that we all know yeah. we need to face in this nascent industry. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time, Margaret. It's been a pleasure to have you here today. You're welcome. Thank you.